Hey guys, Peter here to do an album review. Today I'm here to tell you about the latest from Napalm Death, Resentment is Always Seismic, out February 11th on Century Media Records. This release has 8 tracks, 29 minutes in length, and this is a mini album. Not quite an EP, not quite a full length record. And obviously they are an iconic UK grindcore band. Now this release picks up exactly where Throws of Joy and the Jaws of Defeatism left off. It includes songs that didn't make the cut as far as that album is concerned, and some cover tracks as well. As far as the design of this record is concerned, I think it's really interesting that at first glance it gives you a sense of a compilation, it gives you a sense of an album that doesn't have a structure, that doesn't have a path, that doesn't have a design, just eight songs thrown in together and just enjoy the experience. The more you listen to it, the more you start to see that there are some patterns emerging from the overall construction. The way they place the cover songs really breaks the original material and allows the, the overall release to have a little bit more life, to feel a little bit more dynamic and overall be a little bit more engaging. It becomes more dynamic, the experience becomes more attractive, it becomes a much better album to listen to by having those changes, by having those songs broken apart in the overall design of the record. Once you move into the sound, this is Napalm Death and you're going to feel the DNA of the band is alive and well across all eight songs, perhaps a little bit more in the original material, a little bit less in the cover songs, but it's there through and through. They have the ability to bring these two worlds together. On one hand, they create songs that are very gritty, very grimy, that they cut through, that have this immediate impact with a lot of intensity, and on the other hand, they create music that still has a lot of texture, that has a lot of substance, that has a lot of depth and this release is no different. Those two worlds are coming together. You see them coexist in the same songs and sometimes you get more of one, more of the other, but they're always there together in order to give you this big volume, this thick volume, this aggressive sound that just has pure intensity and aggression at every single turn. Within the soundscape, I wanna touch base on the bass, drums, and guitars because I feel like all of these three elements are giving you something different within all of these eight songs. The bass is phenomenal across all eight tracks. I like the tone, I like the delivery, I love the execution. It really pops and it helps create depth, it helps, it helps create texture. In some songs it even adds a little bit more grooviness to the overall experience and to the overall essence of the tracks themselves. It just has a big role to play and it plays that role to perfection from beginning all the way to the end. I just love the bass work throughout the entire record. Once you move into the drums, I felt like the drums had a little bit more of a control environment. They didn't, uh, they didn't go off the beaten path frequently. They kept the album grounded. They helped create heaviness by creating volume, by creating texture, by creating depth. In those elements, that's where the heaviness comes through. And they help guide the listener from track to track and within the tracks themselves. And it's something that you can hold on to because the experience that you're gonna get out of the drums, it's so balanced, it's so cohesive from start to finish that you start to feel like it's one of those elements that it's gonna guide you all the way across eight tracks. The guitars are ripping. They just absolutely shred across every single song, perhaps a little bit less uh, in some of the covers because of the nature of the cover. You have to adapt to what that song was all about as far as the original arc is concerned. But in the original material, they absolutely rip. They have tons of intensity, tons of aggression, feeling uh, very thin at times in terms of how they cut through and how they guide the listener's direction from, from movement to movement, from portion of the song to portion of the song, and at the same time providing a little bit of thickness, a little bit of depth that really helps ground the overall existence of the record and the overall experience that these songs have. I just really enjoyed the dynamic flow that the guitars had without really breaking character from track to track. It doesn't matter where they're going, it always feels very connected, it always feels very smooth, it happens almost without you even noticing and that's the beauty of their sound where they can create so much intensity, so much aggression and still move it uh, almost seamless in the back end. Now as far as the vocals are concerned, super dynamic. I mean Barney is phenomenal on this, on this release and he really showcases a, a wide range and what he can do with that range. Uh, I love the grittiness, I love the, the power, uh, the aggression, the intensity that you have in the lyrics really gets transmitted well in terms of the vocal performance. But I think where he really shines or he goes a little bit outside the box is in the covers. In the covers he takes a little bit more liberties, he goes a little bit beyond what I would expect and it really surprised me. Uh, and that was something that left me scratching my head uh, ever so slightly. But you need those kind of 
performances, you need those kind of approaches on a record like this. You can take chances, you can gamble a little bit more, you don't have to worry about the overall design, you don't have to worry about overall fluidity, you don't have to worry about the big picture. You just have to concentrate on each and every single track and do what you want to do, be creative, think outside the box, and I felt vocally that's exactly what happened with this release. Now, all around, this is such a fun record to listen to because it has no boundaries, there's no limits, there's no restrictions on what it should be or what it could have been because it's not really a full-length record. It, Like I said, it feels more like a compilation, but a compilation that's designed with patterns. So because of that, it's so much fun to listen to. You enjoy it, you press play, it's only 29 minutes, so you're gonna go back for it again and that adds to the overall playability that it has. Now, as far as favorite songs are concerned, I picked an original track and two covers. The original track is by Proxy. Ripping track from start to finish. It doesn't slow down, it doesn't take breaks. It's just in your face constantly from the start all the way to the end. The vocals stretch out the track. I mean, this is a really penetrating, it, it doesn't have a real thick sound to it. It just has more of a penetrating cut to the way it comes across. And then the vocals stretch that out even more. But at the same time, they're not just stretching it, but they're adding some substance to it. So it makes the song feel a little bit more complete make it, the song feel a little bit more together. Matching the intensity of the music with the vocals really allows the two to blend as one and the song becomes complete across all the different elements. Next you have People Pie, which is a slab cover, and this one is Killer. First of all, Killer Bass. Killer Bass tone, Killer Bass guitar throughout the entire track. Really interesting way of approaching, giving some grooviness to the song. This is a track that pushes boundaries. I was not expecting this cover to be here, but when I hear it, I was like, wow, this is really interesting, this is really different. So it's a track that's gonna make you think, that's gonna make you come back to it in order for you to digest it a little bit more. And I felt like I was discovering something different about it every time that I played it. Even though it's not an overcomplicated song, it doesn't have a lot of layers, it's not a song that you have to really break or, or peel it apart, but still it, it felt to me so different from everything else on this release that I always gravitated to it because of that difference that it had. Uh, the vocals on the song are really interesting as well. Having a, a choir, like a, a backup vocal style approach to this song really changes the dynamic of the track. It really changes uh, in terms of what you would expect from a Napalm Death song, not in terms of what you expect from the original. From the original you see the migration of movements as far as sound and vocals are concerned into it. But from a Napalm Death perspective, this really felt different to me and that difference was really welcoming as far as a release like this is concerned. Next you have Don't Need It, a Bad Brains cover and absolute mayhem and destruction. It's one minute that feels like three minutes of your face, ears, head, nose, putting it to a blender and absolutely being demolished by it. That's exactly how this track is put together with a napalm death twist and DNA to it, just turning everything all the way up to 11, breaking the knob and just letting it run wild. That's how this song feels, that's how this song sounds, keeping a lot of DNA of the original intact, but adding the Napalm Death twist and style, that lime twist to it that just takes everything up a single notch. And I absolutely love this track, I love the cover that they did with this song, and I love the guitar solo that they have in it. The guitar solo was really interesting to me because I was expecting it to sound perhaps a little bit different, but they kept a lot of the griminess in it and it made it feel very complete. It made the track feel almost like what you would expect from Napalm Death if this was their original material. This is it. Resentment is always seismic out February 11th on Century Media Records. Let me know your thoughts on the band, on the singles. Use the comment section below. I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care, guys.